which is going to be the future of the global network. Well, up next is going to be Mr. Pierre Peterson, uh, founder and creator by the network, who will be discussing the future of global networks. Well, Mr. Peterson uh, sets the creative ambition for the company. He's somebody who's worked a lifetime at Gray. He co-founded Uncle Gray in Denmark and served as the chief creative officer of Gray, Germany. Since 2010, he has been in New York as the global ECD deputy worldwide chief creative officer and chairman of the Global Creative Council. Under Pierre's leadership, the Creative Council also became the catalyst of creating a strong creative culture across the entire Gray Network. Well, ladies and gentlemen, in just the next few minutes, uh, Mr. Pierre Peterson, as you can rightly see, is uh, going to be joining us on the screen. And uh, Mr. Peterson has uh, very graciously agreed, if time allows, uh, uh, to be a part of this wonderful E4M conclave. So, well, ladies and gentlemen, once again, a reminder that uh, E4M Conclave is going live on Facebook, LinkedIn, as well as on Twitter. Do share it across so that we can put the word across and keep hashtagging hashtag E4M Conclave. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Peterson, for joining us. Over to you. <laughs> thank you very much. Um, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, I wish I could be uh, in your amazing country in person. I miss, uh, I miss traveling in India. Uh, I have a lot of good friends and business colleagues there. So uh, you would have to uh, put up with this screen and the virtual me. Uh, it's only half as good as the real thing. So I hope uh, I, you are, can forgive that. But um, uh, I've been asked to talk about the, uh, the future of the global uh, network. Uh, and I'm in the middle of creating that, so to speak. I'm, I've, I've launched a uh, a global network of uh, creative agencies uh, in the end of uh, 2020 in, in October. And uh, so I, I would like to take you through what we have done, but also uh, give uh, a couple of directions to how you as an agency or as a client working with agencies should actually watch out for what is the future facing uh, networks uh, or agencies for that matter uh, uh, that, that you should be looking out for. Uh, because a lot of things are changing, as you know. So I will uh, share my screen and give a short presentation and uh, hopefully uh, you can jump in with the uh, questions uh, as you see fit. Uh, keep the chat open. Um, uh, I'll keep an eye out of for, for, for the chats. Okay, my name is Pierre Peterson, founder creative of By the Network, new agency network launched in October. Um, we are a uh, global network of some of the best creative and non-traditional agencies in the world. So already there, you can tell my focus is on the creative side. Uh, we, we see ourselves as focusing on the creative, but not in an advertising sense of the word, but more non-traditional. Uh, and the agencies that are part of uh, this network uh, all have a very big strength in creativity, but also in non-traditional media, technology, content production, all of these things that are the more future-facing part of our industry. Um, the biggest difference uh, between us and let's say a WPP or, or, or an Omnicom is that this network is owned by independent agencies, uh, highly creative, uh, carefully curated, uh, and that makes a huge difference uh, in the way we run things, uh, as it is creatives that are actually owning uh, this network. Uh, it's also uh, a, a big change in philosophy that instead of this, this usual, the usual holding company structure where you're trying to build as much profit in the holding company as possible, our philosophy is actually the reverse. We want to keep as much of the profits and decision making in the local agency as possible. Uh, and, and we are much more democratic. We also share our profits uh, with the owners that are the agencies. And we collaborate as individual agencies around a higher purpose that brings us together instead of being brought together by uh, a centralized uh, business structure uh, determined by, by money. So that is a very different approach to, to the way of working. Um, we thought this would be a small network uh, of a few people, but turned out that we are growing really fast. We are now 500 creatives uh, covering 40 nationalities, working at 20 different agencies and in 25 different markets. So things are moving really fast for us. 
uh, latest member of uh, by the network is actually in India, uh, Atom Group uh, joined uh, only uh, last week. Uh, as part of, of the network and we are already, uh, actually we cheated a little bit, we worked together in a couple of uh, months leading up to this and, and super successful collaboration with some interesting uh, up and coming creative uh, people uh, with, with big experience from the Indian market. We already won uh, together a, a very prestigious big uh, global pitch with Atom uh, that we are still celebrating. Um, just an overview of the network. So as you can tell, we are in all corners of the world and we are covering all um, modern creative aspects of, of our industry. Uh, so it's not, this is not about advertising. We have agencies focusing only on branding or design, building new, uh, new concepts, uh, companies that are focusing on music collaborations, uh, content production, uh, TV production, and, and all sorts of things uh, that are part of the modern palette uh, for, for the marketer. So instead of having this sort of, uh, everybody is the same within the network, I, that's sort of the, the Starbucks philosophy of running a network where no matter what office you walk into, they all serve, serve the same coffee, so to speak. Uh, we celebrate the difference between the agencies and are putting agencies together that are covering uh, different skill sets in order to create something completely different uh, than, than what you would expect. Uh, and that is a big part of how we work. Uh, we already work for a number of big prestigious clients around the world. Uh, and this is growing. We, we secured uh, two big pieces of global business only last week. Uh, so that is, it's actually rapidly growing uh, and, and, and being incredibly successful already. Um, we come from a creative point of view. All the agencies are in Bida Network is owned by creative people. Uh, so it's no secret, we live and breathe for doing better creative work. That is, that is our philosophy. That is what we, that's where we come from. That is not to say we don't acknowledge other parts like media, technology, uh, digital, social, all of these things. We just said our focus is on the ideas, uh, not so much on, on the, the implementing or the technology behind it. Uh, we would rather collaborate with experts on, on that um, going forward. Um, so just an example, because I think as a creative, you have to show your work. Uh, here's an example uh, that just gives you a feeling of what kind of work that we're doing in, in the network. This is from small agency in, uh, in New York for diesel.
So um, this, of course, represents the the kind of work that uh, that we are looking for, work that is part of culture and is impacting discussions and shareable uh, with clients that are brave enough to to do non traditional work. Um, just to to sort of that that is enough about us actually, but to talk about uh, why we did this and and how how did we come up with uh, a completely different kind of uh, of network? I think I think a lot of us that are now part of by the network came from big holding company owned uh, agency networks. I was one of them, and 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 uh, and in the sum up of my my bio, it, it's pretty clear that I has have spent almost a lifetime. Uh, at Gray, one of the WPP agencies, as a creative leader, both uh, locally, regionally, but also uh, in recent years as the global creative chairman of uh, of Gray, and and we've all seen um, how the, the industry has changed. And this was before pandemic. Uh, this was this was a, a gradual change from what I would say was very very focused on the products. There was a certain pride around the creative product that we were producing. Everybody was was clear that our existence depended on it depended on that, and onto a, a different kind of mentality that was now running uh, the big uh, holding companies. Uh, and I gave a speech in Cannes a couple of years ago at Cannes Lions, uh, where I basically said this: that the agency model as we as we all knew it is is that and this was two years before the pandemic uh, this is this has just become even more true as the pandemic pan pandemic has hit the world uh, that the way we think about what an agency is and how we work with our clients is practically outdated uh, in so many ways and it's going to affect um, our our ab ability to survive as an industry uh, how how uh, how we are going to change that, uh, because change is inevitable and, and whether we are changing as a consequence of the pandemic, uh, change is, is going to be necessary for the creative industry to survive and for uh, global creative uh, networks to exist in the future that actually are offering creativity and are not just sort of a, an appendix to a consultancy agency or a technology company or a media company, because that is unfortunately uh, the, the trend uh, for our industry. Um, I think one of the problems that I have seen is that the big, big networks have uh, all turned corporate and, uh, and walking around in big agencies, uh, unfortunately, this, was, this is not an uncommon sight this was, of course, at the time when, when people could still go to the office. Now it's a little bit different. Um, but, but these sort of uh, old-fashioned ways of working that doesn't really belong in a creative world where people should collaborate in an inspiring atmosphere and exchange ideas. Um, you shouldn't really have small cubicles where people were sort of isolated with their computers. But unfortunately, uh, and I think if you have walked around the halls of big agencies, this is a site. Uh, that you see uh, way, way too often. We have, we had floors at Gray that actually literally, literally looked like this, and and I was almost ashamed to build to bring clients to those floors because they would basically say, uh, you know, are you are you creative or not? Uh, what what kind of company is this? But but uh, but this happened and 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 had a huge in fact in, uh, impact on everything that we're doing uh, in the creative industry. Uh, one of the consequences is that the best creatives have now gone independent. Um, some have been pushed out by, by the, the, the changes uh, made by, by agencies during the pandemic, but this was a trend that was happening uh, even before. Uh, some of the best creatives simply had this, uh, you know, it, it, they had enough basically and started their own agencies. As, uh, as one of the most creative people I know uh, told me, uh, this, and this is, uh, this is a, a real quote, uh, you know, I had this feeling of, 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 of giving my best uh, to an agency that didn't really appreciate my, the creativity that I brought to the table. Uh, and that feeling uh, leads to uh, the best creatives turning independent, either with boutique agencies, like we have seen with, uh, with Gott in, uh, in, uh, in the Americas, with, with Anselmo Ramos uh, leading that, or or uncommon in uh, in London with with Nils Leonard, 
but there has been a, a number of these uh, of these independent agencies, and also a lot of good creatives have now gone more or less freelance, uh, and and is available in a completely different way than before. Of course, you take notice when when people like Greg Khan is pushed out uh, from BBDO. Uh, Greg Khan is now a successful leader of an independent agency called Mischief. Uh, and and uh, and is an example, just an example of what is actually happening in our industry. Uh, accessing the best creatives doesn't doesn't necessarily happen through the big uh, agency networks as it did before. Um, at the same time, clients are abandoning the old retainer and, and agency of record model and are and are now looking for a different, more project based way of working, or are turning at the same time uh, more in house. Uh, and uh, and this is uh, this paves the way for what I would say is a golden age for a new breed of creative agencies, including a new breed uh, of uh, global networks like like by the network uh, as an example. Uh, it's it's simple fertile ground. We 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 are we are welcomed with open arms by the clients uh, that to a certain extent have have had enough of the old ways of working. Uh, the rigid way, the, the rigid ways of the old systems, and are looking for a much more agile, flexible, transparent way of working that the independents are offering. Um, and and so I think we're going to see that in every market in the world, uh, much more focus on independent agencies uh, that are closer to the core product of creativity, and where you can access the best uh, and most experienced people. And I'm not talking about small boutique offices that are doing the flower shop on the corner, that kind of agency, or the tattoo shop down the street. Now we're talking about independent agencies that are now winning big global pieces of business uh, that, uh, that, that in a normal world would have gone to the big uh, old fashioned networks. So this is a, this is a massive structural change that, that are going to affect uh, the industry. Um, I think the pandemic accelerated uh, this inevitable structural change in the creative industry. Um, and uh, to use Martin Scholl, it's also, he's, he's an old friend and colleague of mine from WPP. He's, he's a very dramatic person. He, he puts it very bluntly where he says, uh, there's going to be, uh, as a consequence of, of coronavirus, uh, a Darwinian cull of the ad industry. And uh, uh, now, from the seat where he sits now, with with his new company, uh, S4 Capital, and, and 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 what he's doing there, uh, he he's become a very sort of a very open-minded uh, critic of of what has been going on in in the industry that he actually helped build himself. Um, but I think, to a certain degree, he's right. Uh, certainly, the agency that I used to work for until recently, I left Gray this summer only to read very shortly after that the, that the brand will be retired uh, uh, under the, um, the WPP sort of umbrella as, as it's merged under the AKQA group. Um, so I think, and it was pretty clear also from hearing what Mark, Mark Reed had to say, that there has been a lot of consolidations, a lot of offices that are no longer uh, there and, of, and, 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 and agency networks uh, that have either been merged or has ceased to exist. And I think we have only seen the top of the iceberg on that. So uh, we have to imagine a world with, with uh, a lot of uh, big name agencies, uh, also networks uh, that will be uh, no longer in, in the market in the very near future. Uh, so this is, a, this is a big deal and this is a big structural change um, you know, as, as our industry is, is uh, going on, going through a, a like a historic uh, phase in its evolution. Um, and then this is, this is as inevitable as, as anything, and new technologies are already, already enabling new ways of working. Uh, and, and I predict that even on the, on, in the near future, uh, technologies uh, of various kinds will fundamentally change our creative industry, uh, you know, to, to almost to become unrecognizable. Uh, this is about the way we work. This is, you know, where we've seen remote working as being facilitated by technologies, uh, like the meeting we are having now is a good example of that. We wouldn't have thought about it like that in, in uh, before the, the pandemic. 
but it's now possible. And, and we're going to see a lot more solutions on enabling remote work uh, and, and, and uh, accessing people across the world in different ways, just like we have seen uh, fiber uh, have, have revolutionized the, the way uh, freelancers can be accessed uh, digitally, remotely from all over the world. Uh, you know, and, and we're going to see very similar things happening uh, in our industry. So imagine kind of an Uber kind of uh, takeover of, uh, of, uh, of, the, of the industry uh, where the old agencies are the old taxi companies. I think, you can, I think that gives you a pretty clear perspective of, of the challenges that we're going to see. This might be driven by uh, the old uh, holding companies. Uh, I, I, you know, that I, I would think they have plans for that, but also expect to see new players uh, enter uh, the industry with completely different approaches to how people can find each other, work with each other, deliver solutions. Uh, we've already seen this in gaming and film production and, and other uh, sort of fringe areas to our industry. So this will happen. Um, so it's time to rewrite the rule books uh, of, uh, of being a creative uh, global network. Uh, so I, I prepared a few rules uh, for the global networks of the future. Uh, so hopefully Mark uh, is still on the line so he can take notes. Um, so my rule number one is never let anything or anyone get in the way of great work. Sounds pretty simple, but this is happening every day in agencies around the world. Um, so, and, and just one thing that, that we have to remind ourselves, uh, and I think Mark covered this, the need for creativity is the only sustainable reason for agencies to exist in the first place. And if we lose uh, just an inch of our, our vitality on the core, which is our creativity, uh, we are sort of losing ground to, to an ever increasing and stronger uh, technology-based uh, industry, media industry uh, and, and not least uh, consultancy industry uh, that is not really putting creative at the, uh, the center but will swallow our industry uh, you know given half the change so this will be a consequence if we if we are not good enough at delivering the core product um, so we have to break down the rigid processes that and 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 because there are too many we have complicated things unnecessarily uh, these can be structural problems, these can be processes that are simply just, you know, outdated in a way because they're just, you know, they, 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 they give us uh, too slow a reaction time when it comes to, to putting out uh, output. Unfortunately, it, it can take a year in some cases for big brands to, to hit the market with, uh, with a new campaign. And it should be in a matter of weeks or, or, or a few months. Uh, so we have to dramatically cut down on the process that gets us there. And we also have to look critically at the middlemen that are managing creativity. These people can be both on the client side, but we have them in the industry as well uh, that are, are not really contributing much to the creative product, but are just sitting in between uh, clients and, uh, and the creative uh, and, and are managing this. Uh, and I use managing here as a, as a negative thing because uh, what we should be focusing on is unleashing creativity in everything we do uh, versus sort of holding back uh, on, on things by managing it. So that is a philosophy that I have and think something I think will determine whether your, your agency or your network will be uh, future facing or not. So there's a lot of things change in the way we work. Um, then, uh, sorry for, for showing uh, cash like this, but I think we are too well behaved in our industry. We have been very polite. I think we, we need to be much more uh, willing to, to change things. Uh, and, and I look at, at other industries where you have an Elon Musk changing everything by being anything than, than well behaved. I mean, again, um, we should be the industry uh, of, uh, of, uh, of the eccentric and the interesting people. Uh, and and not uh, you know uh, being the sort of well-behaved, boring uh, business people. Uh, that is that is not our job as a creative industry. We should be challenging uh, the world we live in. We should be opinionated about it and 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 seek to change uh, stuff around us. And that means that we don't follow the rules all the time. So don't be afraid to stand out. 
uh, with your opinions, your work, and or or doing stuff uh, that puts you at the center of attention. There is there is there's simply not enough uh, creative uh, people uh, that are speaking out about stuff. I think we are we have lost the generation of uh, of creatives uh, that have have sort of tried to fit in and instead of 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 standing out and at the end of it standing out is uh, part of or should be part of the dna of of any creative person just look at the people that created our industry the the Hegarty's and 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 the ogilvy's of the world these people did not hold back on on opinions uh, and and i think when i look out in the industry right now i'm i i lack uh, this mentality of wanting to change stuff and 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 have opinions about what we're doing um so this sounds a little crazy, a little maybe, but but work with brave clients, uh, you know, uh, uh, that have uh, brave brave strategies, uh, and um, and I think we have a little bit of a tendency in our industry to sort of blame the clients for everything. You know, our clients are not really looking for creativity in our market. It's a little bit too conservative, so forth. But I think we have a job as creatives to enable our clients to become the best clients in the world. And I think it's possible by working in a different way, much more face-to-face, uh, -face, getting our hands dirty uh, as creatives, uh, understanding the business issues of our clients, getting deeper into the industries that they are part of and the challenging challenge, challenges that they are facing. Uh, I think we have had a, an arrogant approach uh, to selling our work to our clients, uh, you know, almost expecting them to, to just turn up at our doorstep and buy it uh, on face value because we say so. Uh, but I think we're going to have to work in a much more collaborative way where, where uh, you know, where we uh, as a creative industry uh, collaborate or co-pilot with our clients. Uh, and if I look at the most interesting work that is coming out in the world right now, and of course, you have to mention brands like uh, Burger King, uh, Fernando Machado, the CMO of, of that brand, is, is, uh, is definitely a, a huge part of the creative process and will be considering himself as part of delivering uh, great ideas and facilitating great ideas. That didn't come overnight. That was an evolution, uh, you know, paved by, uh, by a lot of good creative people that worked with, with Fernando over the years and, and basically taught him to be the best client in the world. I think this is an obligation we have as creatives uh, to to give uh, that ability to our clients instead of sort of keeping creativity as a weird black box uh, that, that you can only buy at our place. So be generous about that. Um, we have to break the rules of corporate thinking. I don't think any agency uh, exists if we try to copy the ways and the feel of our clients. I think a lot of clients that are caught up in much more uh, corporate uh, environments are looking for, for agencies as a way to, to compensate for that. And they're not really looking for agencies that look and feel the same way as the place they come from. So let's break with those uh, old fashioned rules of corporate thinking. And, and, and it's, it's pretty apparent if you work in our industry that, that over the past 10 years, uh, the CFOs have been driving uh, most agencies. In fact, the most likely candidate for a CEO uh, in an agency is somebody that used to run the finance or close to that, uh, or at least have that business background uh, versus having a creative background. But we have to break with that. Uh, right now, we are very CFO driven in every, everything we're doing, and we should be idea driven. We are part of of the, the idea uh, world. And this is a little bit like if you compare us to, to Apple, uh, when Apple uh, lost sight of their, of their creativity, when, when, uh, uh, when jobs were, were not, no longer there, uh, they, they, lost, uh, they lost everything. And, and only when you, they turned back to that focus that was at the core of what that brand was about, they created the most valuable brand in the world. Uh, it's a little bit the same. Uh, we, we are like Apple or Walt Disney or those kinds of companies. Uh, you cannot be a CFO uh, driving things. You need to have uh, the, the background in the product. 
uh, to fully uh, understand and, and, and drive an agency network, in my opinion. So put creativity at the center and creative people at the top. Uh, we've done that. Uh, our entire network is uh, based on creative people that are running things. Uh, it's, there is a tendency to think that you can't trust a creative with money. I think it's a big mistake. I think uh, creative people will easily understand uh, how to make the right decisions. And, and they will make the right decisions from the point of view of creativity, which is at the core of what we are doing or should be doing as an agency. So this is the only way. Uh, let's start to see more creative people run the big networks. Um, just ask yourself uh, how many restaurants you would uh, walk into to meet the business manager. Uh, you're going to, you want to talk to the chef. You want to talk to the, to the people that are creating uh, the food that you want to enjoy. Uh, that is why you walk in there, not to talk to the business manager. Uh, but we are showing the business manager a little bit too much. Just, just after this, do a quick search of uh, agencies or agency networks and look at the lineup of uh, people they present uh, most of the time. Uh, yeah, there's a couple of creatives, but most of the time they're showing anything but creative people. And I think it's a big mistake. Uh, you know, if I was a client, I would look at who's running uh, the agency that I'm working with. Uh, is this run by a creative person that understands the product that I'm buying? Or is this run by a business person that is just looking for the, 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 the profit part of it? Uh, I, think, I think it's a big, big mista uh, mistake, mistake to walk into a restaurant that is driven by business people. Um, this is a provocation. Uh, I think a lot of people uh, say creativity equals advertising in our industry, but it's in fact, it's not. In fact, I would say if it looks, speaks or feels like advertising, it's pro it, it probably won't work. And that means that you have to do anything but advertising. Uh, of course, sometimes you have to do a TV commercial if that is the right thing to do. But, but you can't start there. You have to think beyond all of that and look at how the consumer is actually uh, using communication uh, which is much more engraved into culture and, and technology and our mobile phones and all the stuff that is going on around us. And that's where we need to com be communicating and how, that's where we need to be creative, uh, not uh, from TV out, which is sort of the feeling you get when you walk into the old fashioned agency still. And, and you would say, uh, you know, I heard, uh, you know, how Mark Weitz said that you now half of the media spend is digital and I, and, and, and I still don't think that has been fully reflected in the presentations that we give our clients as agencies. We still lead in with the good old uh, ideas uh, on, on TV commercials and stuff like that. And I think it's a mistake. Um, I can just, just as an example of the kind of work, again, this is a creative talking so I can show you work. This is a, an example of a piece of creative work that we just launched uh, in, from our agency in Sweden called FAM. Uh, it already won the uh, Eurobest Grand Prix. Uh, so have a look. This is the kind of thing that is, is non-traditional advertising, but it's going to shape uh, the future of, of creativity. Thank you. 
I think it's important uh, this kind of work, and it, it it's the kind of uh, thinking that that doesn't look or feel like advertising, but can give brands uh, a huge advantage uh, at the at the sort of moment of truth when you have to decide between brand A or brand B, uh, and 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 use the insight of how more and more consumers are using uh, carbon footprint as a as a determining factor, uh, not just price of of the product and quality and stuff like that. Um, this uh, again, I think creativity has been has been associated with uh, the ability to win a few awards. I think the agencies should stop chasing awards with fake work. Uh, I think our job is now to, you know, after the pandemic, I think also the award shows have to rethink their uh, role in, in our industry. Uh, I think it's, it's been a maybe a very healthy year of not having as much award shows and can was canceled. Uh, gave them a chance to rethink the whole thing and also for us to rethink what is the role of these award shows. Uh, I think the best way forward is to do our best work for our, for our biggest clients and, 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 and then win the awards with that work uh, instead of doing specific work uh, only for the award shows. Uh, truly for, for a network like By the Network, we are we are, we are absolutely not interested in, 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 in chasing awards with the dedicated award work. We will only submit work to the award shows that actually came out of a collaboration with our clients. And I think that should be the, the future for, for the networks as well. It will, it will add more credibility uh, if we do it like that, in my opinion. Um, this is for the leaders in the big networks. Get out from the boardroom, down from the high horses, and, uh, and build a network of human beings, which also means that you have to be a human being yourself. Uh, I think we've seen uh, a little bit too many middle-aged uh, men in dark suits running the creative industry from a, from a fancy corner office in a fancy building on a very expensive atlas in a very expensive city. I, I think uh, those days are over. Um, I think we need to see much more diversity in, in, in leadership. As I said, I would call for more creative people running things, give it more color, give it more diversity on sexuality, on, on gender and, and, and geography. Uh, and, and why on earth is it necessary to run big networks out of London or New York? Um, I think it's possible to, to do it uh, from anywhere in the world. Certainly, we've, we've decided not to have in the network a, a, an old-fashioned headquarter. Uh, we are born during the pandemic, so we, we can run this network from anywhere uh, because we are connected uh, via technology. But uh, right now, uh, I'm speaking from, from Copenhagen in Denmark, which is sort of suited in the middle of, of uh, time zones, much better than, than New York, actually. So it's doable, and, and I think we, we have to see uh, this uh, much more. Um, final two, build a network of talented uh, people with a shared passion to do great work. Uh, don't underestimate the value of, of, of culture. Uh, I think we have a little bit too little of it in the big network, the big networks. It's more about money. Uh, I think we should have much more shared passion, much more shared culture. Uh, it's, a, it's going to be one of the biggest challenges for the networks in the future to really build that sort of shared passion to kick ass um, and then break down all these borders and silos that still exist, although the lines are getting much more blurred uh, and start work together, start working together. Um, you know, I, I show this, I'm from Denmark where we, we have this sort of very democratic, very Nordic approach, very collaborative approach to life. 
uh, my ideal network looks a little bit like this. It's a place where we all gather around uh, the bonfire, tell each other stories, uh, can work as friends and, and share a good time together because that is where good ideas happen. They happen at the bonfire when people that like each other and want to work with each other come together and exchange minds and, and, and ideas. Uh, and it's not more formal than that. That is actually what we, are, that what we should strive for. Human beings, creative, talented people that are sharing and collaborating and making great work for our clients in a, in a way that is gratifying, not just for our clients' business, but also gratifying for us as creatives. Uh, and that I think is the only sustainable approach to what we are doing as an agency instead of, instead of making it too complicated. And I also think uh, this is the kind of network or agency that will attract the most creative people in the on the planet because we have all of us a huge challenge of, uh, of attracting talent and keeping that talent so that, uh, that we can keep evolving uh, our creative industry. Uh, I think we are losing out to much more interesting companies that are offering more stuff like this uh, at the heart of what they're doing. Uh, if, if you are a young person, most creative person uh, with an open mindset and wants to make a difference in the world with, with, with your creativity, uh, you have to look at each industry. Uh, and I don't think uh, they, I don't think that person is seeing our industry, the creative industry, uh, as necessarily uh, the most attractive place uh, to work right now. So that is a job we all have to do. Uh, make this industry a place that attracts the best minds uh, of the world, the most, most creative people of the world, because our, our future success is going to depend on that. And even our survival as an industry will depend on that. So... Um, Sum it up. If you stick to the old rules, you probably uh, not you, you probably won't change anything, uh, which gives uh, me sort of the last sort of piece of advice. Think like a rule breaker. Uh, be inspired by other rule breakers in other industries, uh, and 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 change things. Uh, you're not probably not going to do it without. Uh, haters reacting or whatever, but you you w won't change anything if you stick to the old rules. And I think uh, the pandemic sort of you know put a sand like a, a line in the sand, saying okay, anything that worked before the pandemic will probably not work after the pandemic. So this is our chance to rethink the rule book and and build something completely different. So. You can have a chat, look at our website, see a little bit more about what we're doing and who we are, uh, by the network.com, or, or you can call me or write me. Uh, I'm always open to work together with anyone that, that has good ideas or uh, challenges that they think fit uh, with what we're doing uh, at the network. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Pierre Pedersen, for joining us. And what an uh, insightful uh, uh, presentation that was. I'm sure a lot of our viewers and everyone who's attending it live would have really benefited out of this. So thank you so much, Mr. Peterson, for joining us live today. You said all the way from uh, Denmark. Thank you for your yes. time. Thank you very much. Bye.